Hi, it's Carly with Launch Code. In this video, we're going to be adding an view model into our Coding Events MVC application. So in the last video, we introduced how to go about um, passing in an event model into, um, into our application view, the index, the home page of the application. We are going to draw on sort of that capability, but in a, in a different sense. So we're creating something called a view model, which will, uh, which will be responsible for like another layer of, I guess, data security between, um, between the view of the application and the actual data storage, um, which we'll start coding and, and hopefully that will become clearer. Um, let's look into events controller. So like I said, last video, we took this, um, we, we took an actual list of event objects and passed that into the view. We're going to be doing something similar, but not in the index view this time. Now we're going to be dealing with that add view. And instead of passing in an event model, we're going to be passing in sort of a different kind of model um, called a view model, which we'll talk about as we create it. Uh, before we do that, um, one thing that we can do to sort of help align our thinking our, our view model um, frame of mind. Let's rename this post action method to be called um, add. And we can ditch this route because the name now mirrors the conventional routing of the application. So this will be um, mapped to slash events slash add post requests at that location. So this is similar to, uh, we have these kind of corresponding items. One action method is responsible for retrieving the view form, and this action method is responsible for processing the view form. And the framework is smart enough to um, know the difference in responsibilities between these two, partially thanks to this post attribute, which says, um, you know, use this when a post request is made to that route rather than a get request like this one. This is similar to what we did with the, um, the pair of delete action methods below. So renaming this, this action method isn't essential um, or required for implementing the view model, but it, but it will help hopefully just um, get our, our brain to start thinking about the view model and its, and its role within the application. So to create a view model, um, we're going to store it in its own directory separate from the model. So we're going to call this view models. Um, and the first one we're going to add is for these, uh, for this add view. So a view model will, um, will, is responsible for al aligning the data associated with a view um, with the application data. Um, so a name, an appropriate name for this view model that we're going to be using, whose role is implicated in the add view would be add event view model. So that's, we're gonna, that's what we're going to be calling it. I'm going to say new class. It's just going to be an empty class. And as we get started with this view model, it really will um, sort of take some responsibility away from, um, well, it, it really closely mirrors what our existing event model looks like, um, which is just essentially two properties. One is a name and one is a description, and they're both strings. I really botched that. And we will just add that for now. We don't need to add a, add a constructor into this new class, but it is just a plain C-sharp class. There's nothing special about this just yet. 
Um, with that in place, to uh, before we start passing it in um, into those action methods within the controller, we can take advantage of its of this structure inside of the add view form. Sorry, add event form view. <laughs> so in this add view. Um, we just like we did in the last video we're going to pass in an instance of this model um, and in order to have access to this we have to use the right naming namespace which is coding events demo dot view models that directory that we just created. Now, we are doing this in a bit of a different order than we did last time. We haven't yet, um, let's go into events controller, into this add method. We haven't yet passed in any, um, any object into this view. Actually, let's just do that now. So what we're going to be doing is passing in an instance of this new type that we've created. And I need to add a using statement here as well to use that namespace. Save that before I forget. Um, and then we want to pass in this new instance that we've created. So I'm just scrolling up here so you can see that this is, although this is a list of events, it's the same idea, right? We create, um, we we create either a collection or a single instance of this um, object type and then pass it into the view. Now we can return to what we started over here, which is actually using that object that we've passed in or that item that we've passed into the view, using it within the view. And what this looks like in terms of um, this view model class that we just created is a little bit different from, from what we did um, in the index view. So here, I uh, just want to um, kind of refresh your memory on another topic that we've talked about before, which are these tag helpers that exist in some portions of the application. So we've been on, on internal links, so links that um, go from one, one uh, route in the application to another. We've been using these attributes on our A tags called ASP controller and ASP action. Hopefully these look familiar. Um, we can do the same, we can add the same tags or the same attributes um, onto a form to, to uh, to, to take care of its action. Um, so this is saying that similar to just having written, um, you know, the action attribute and having that equal slash event slash add. Now we can we can also use these what are called tag helpers, these special attributes to the framework. Um, related to that or similar to that, there are other tag helpers now that we can take advantage of now that we've created this view model, namely something called ASP dash four. Um, and what this does is, um, this is really the first kind of instance of the mechanics of the view model. So we've created this view model that has two properties, name and description. Now we're altering or refactoring our add view to draw on those properties. Um, and in order to do so, we need to have the, um, the ASP4 value match precisely the property. So we need the upper class, or sorry, upper, uh, <laughs> upper case um, name for name. Um, and then we can use this ASP4 down here as well. So we'll say, we're gonna just remove this input name and instead use ASP4 
capital name. And we can actually ditch this because the framework is smart enough to recognize what type this name property is and create the right input type. Um, and we can do the same down here with description. So like I mentioned at the top of the video, using um, a view model adds a layer of data I called it data security, but it's like um, we're we haven't we haven't explicitly added validation actions within our application just yet, but we are setting ourselves up to do so. So we're um, we're creating an instance of a, we're creating an instance of a view model um, before we create an instance of or we're creating an instance of something called event view model before we create an instance of an event model and that while it seems it feels a little bit clunky now maybe what it does is it adds more it adds another layer of protection from our application um, accepting bad data so any user form has you know has the possibility of having some um, some erroneous information being passed into it and using this view model that that more closely or strongly ties the data that's being inputted with the, the form itself will ensure that once we get to the actual action of creating the event object, that we have um, we have data that, that will actually create a good event object and not cause um, breaking errors in our application down the road. So let's save that. Um, before we can test this out though, we want to go back to our controller and um, implement these these view changes or implement the view model into the processing of this form. So we've passed in the model using our our add get action method. Now we need to update our add post action method to use this event model. So instead of pass or sorry to <laughs> to use the view model. So instead of passing in the event model um, into the processing action, uh, we're going to pass in the view model into the processing action. And our form knows what the view model is because we've used these uh, ASP4 tag helpers. So I'm just gonna copy this because it's the same item. So we're just saying some instance of this view model is a parameter on this action method. And before we get to add any new event into event data, we have to actually create that new event here inside of the action method. And we're gonna create that event based off of those same properties that are in view model. So again, we say, well, so now we're gonna create a new event. So we'll say event type new event is going to equal new event and here we'll use a different uh, constructor syntax than you may have seen before we're going to use something um, we're going to use a curly bracket uh, initiation of this object which will instantiation of this object which will um, allow us to directly assign the properties of this new event object so we can say event.name is going to equal oops, is going to equal this parameter dot name and same thing whoops I don't want a semicolon there I want a, um, a comma and same thing for description did that again so now what we've done on these lines is starting at 35, ending at 39, we've created a new event object using the properties of the view model that have been assigned within the form. Then once we have that item called new event now, we get to pass that into our data storage. And we've closed the loop on what we need to do to implement this new view model for the add view. Um, so let's save this one and run our application. So this is another instance where everything that we see really on the front end and in the, in the client view 
is going to look exactly the same as it had before, but it's still worth testing because we need to make sure that the changes that we've made, the refactoring that we've done, does allow us to continue to use our application. So let's say Grace Hopper. And I'm just going to call that a conference again. And there we go. So we can still add an object, but our add view um, is creating, is adding this, <laughs> um, too many synonyms. Our add view is taking advantage of this new layer in our application called the view model. And while it in some ways may feel like we've done um, extra work for not a whole lot of payoff again, we are in a position to add validation into that view model, which will come up next.